Great pleased to have with us on the uh, program, Sheriff of El Paso County, Colorado, Sheriff Terry Makita. Sheriff, thank you so much for your time, sir. Oh, you bet. It's a pleasure. Well, uh, I, I, I got to ask you, first of all, your reaction to the votes uh, in the Colorado State Senate yesterday. Well, to be honest, I really wasn't that surprised by it. Um, you know, it's a pure party line vote. There's been no attempt uh, through a factual basis to even lure uh, Republicans over to that side. And I think it's it's systematic of what we have been witnessing the majority, unfortunately, in Colorado doing, and that is ramrodding uh, bills through that fit their agenda. Um, and, and so uh, you said over the weekend on uh, KVOR that um, uh, you had gotten an email last week from the uh, county sheriffs of Colorado that had indicated that Democrat leadership was very upset with a number of sheriffs who were speaking out in opposition to these gun control bills. Yeah, actually, um, I received the email directly from the, the, the county sheriffs of Colorado organization, their executive director, uh, Chris Olson. And he told us that uh, he had met with a few people and, and the, uh, the night before and that it was made clear that uh, the, the Senate Dem leadership is very unhappy with the sheriff's position and opposing the gun bills. And then he in, in, in his letter, the way I read it, is basically it was insinuated that if we want any real chance of a salary increase, then uh, we may want to start t changing our position and at least supporting a couple of these bills. Now, I'm paraphrasing without reading the actual text, but that's exactly how I took it. Wow. Um, to the best of your knowledge, did any sheriff, uh, has any sheriff reversed course? Did anybody come out and support the bills that uh, were voted on yesterday? Uh, not that I'm aware of. And I'll tell you, it's real hard to tell because... Uh, something that I have never seen in our capital, and I've, I've been up there and working with legislators and through the process for the last 13 years, but I have, when I say ramrodded through, that's not just a flashy word. Um, really, the, the, the public input, even a sheriff's ability to testify in opposition or for a bill, has, has really been restricted and shut down. I have never, as a sheriff, been told that only one sheriff can speak in opposition of the bills, not all of them. And then to have the public input, and we're talking between 500 and 1,000 citizens that showed up, uh, basically were eliminated from the process. I've never witnessed that. And, and I can say within reason in past legislatures, I've seen them limit the number of people or say the top 20 to sign up on each side of the issue will have two minutes. And I mean, that's managing your time. Right. But to completely set boundaries and parameters where sheriffs could actually have a voice or citizens could, uh, that process was eliminated. And that's why I said it, it makes it difficult to see who did switch because there's not an opportunity to be heard. Talking with uh, Sheriff Terry Makita from El Paso County. And, 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 you know, we saw, Sheriff, on so many occasions during this legislative fight, the sheer number of gun owners uh, show up at the Capitol, uh, really overwhelming, I, I think, the lawmakers. Uh, and I know that the emails, the phone calls. I mean, I, I'm curious, have you had any of your constituents there in El Paso County say, Sheriff, why are you, why are you speaking out against these new gun control measures? We want these new gun control measures. <laughs> That's an interesting question. I have had one call out of probably uh, a thousand emails and, and, and phone calls if I combine them. I've only had one citizen say, how could you be against universal backgrounds? I called that citizen back. They left me a voicemail and uh, called them back twice to say I'd be happy to explain it, that the title is, is certainly misrepresentative of what it really does. And I never heard back from that citizen. So uh, uh, I'm not even close to seeing any kind of a balanced approach. It is, it is so lopsided uh, with support and, and people speaking out against what the legislature is doing, and, and especially the leadership, the way that they are completely ignoring those that elected them. And I think that's the real tragedy in a lot of this. And, and I want to comment on this, which really has nothing to do with your question. I, I am truly dumbfounded that uh, the vice president of the United States, who you would think has far important things to do, would be calling legislators in Colorado 
a state of which he knows nothing about our laws, our demographics, uh, and our citizenry, and encouraging Democrats to hold their line and to push these these laws through. And especially when it's been stated publicly that these are a product of Bloomberg, by the way. Mm-hmm. And 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 I, I I'm just baffled. And this is you know these are the type actions we're seeing, and there is no debate on statistics. I've looked at the state statistics on uh, many of these issues. Uh, I've looked at all of the mass shootings that have occurred, and I can say without any hesitation or doubt, these bills. Are, are, which are claimed to stop or reduce the number of violence, will have absolutely no impact. And they cannot debate that argument. You know, that, that's the thing, Sheriff, they really can't. Uh, you know, we, one of the bills that, that actually got pulled was this uh, ban on, it would have actually taken uh, existing rights away from uh, right to carry holders in Colorado by uh, instituting a ban on concealed carry on campus. And you know, there were enough legislators who, who opened their mouth and inserted their foot during the debate that uh, uh, enough attention was drawn, that the bill was, was pulled. But you look at some of the bills that survived, the, uh, the, the so-called universal background check bill. Um, why, why are you opposed to the, uh, the, the, the expansion of background checks, the, uh, the end of private sales? Well, you know, the, let, me, let me just say the title of it alone mm-hmm. uh, comes across to the everyday citizen as, okay, that makes sense. But the devil's in the details, and it's not until you really read it that you you realize this is not about just a a universal background check. It is not even about closing the gun show loophole. This is about any kind of an exchange or transfer beyond 72 hours requiring a background check. And, and, And so an example would be I have a neighbor who's probably one of my best friends. I've known him for for 30 years, and he wants to shoot a new rifle I got. Well, it's ridiculous that I have to have a background check on him before I can let him take that rifle out if he may be headed up to his cabin to do some shooting and gone beyond uh, what will now be 72 hours. They at least amended that. But here's the most ridiculous example, and that is, uh, in my job, it requires that I travel a lot. If I leave a firearm for my wife to protect herself while I'm gone, um, and I'm going to be gone more than 72 hours, uh, in the original bill, I would have had to have a background check on my wife, and and that's ridiculous. And and now I'm ha- I have questions about okay, what about law enforcement? We assign a deputy an AR-15. He goes on his days off, and he gives it back to uh, uh, his car partner or something. Does he have to have a background check? And is what concerns me is it has now even gone beyond just a private sale transaction. And that's how it's being sold to the public to to impact those other areas that I just gave examples of. And that's why I'm adamantly opposed to it. It it almost criminalizes law-abiding citizen. And my biggest concern is laws are already so complicated. How many people are going to be criminalized just out of out of the magnitude that they don't realize that they can't let a neighbor go shoot their weapon? Uh, well, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, and, and to that end, Sheriff, I've got to ask you, um, how do you feel about enforcing some of these uh, things, uh, presuming that uh, Governor Hickenlooper signs them and they become law? You know, uh, morally, I, I think it's absolutely absurd. And, and uh, I am uh, in the hopes that law enforcement will retain some discretion and be able to realize that it was not their intent my intent and focus is on those people that are working the underground sales of illegal guns and stolen guns and it'll be another charge added on to them but if a law-abiding citizen says hey i just wanted to let my neighbor shoot it and and uh, i've known him for 50 years and i think it's my responsibility to lobby the da who is also elected and make sure that we minimize criminalizing law-abiding citizens sheriff uh, uh any you know, final thoughts for folks out there in the uh, state of Colorado right now. I know that uh, there are a lot of gun owners who are uh, very concerned, probably a little disheartened, uh, and, and and wondering what's next. You know, um, uh, I saw and looked into the faces of a lot of deflated people last Monday that made the journey from all corners of this state to be heard, and unfortunately. They, they were suppressed and kicked to the side. And some of them kind of walk away with the attitude of, 
why bother? It doesn't make any difference. They're going to do what they want. And I would reach out to all of those citizens that carry that feeling and say that is exactly why evil triumphs. It's when good people stand by and do nothing and, and, and give up. And if I could be successful at one thing, it would be to keep those people energized and those that have been silent to speak out because it's Second Amendment this time, but what about the next time when it's after your Fourth Amendment, your Fifth Amendment, or even your First Amendment? And I think that's what this is really about. And, and for those citizens that are sitting there talking around the dinner table or having conversations with their friends that it doesn't matter, there's nothing we can do about it, they need to stand up and they need to be heard and they need to stick with it and they, and, and they need to voice their values and beliefs. And to do otherwise is going to let them succeed and give tacit approval of not only the tactics that our, our, uh, our, our delegation of Democrats is utilizing, but it's going to have the long-term effect on not just residents of today, but our, our children and future residents of this, this great state. Sheriff, thank you so much for your time, sir. Uh, hope we can do it again soon. Anytime. You give me a call and I'll be happy to talk to you.